Hello, this is Dr. Kalili. This course is on Beverly Hills Dental Corp personal injury, subject oral facial trauma. Patient will be designated as Mary. Mary's date of injury was September 8, 2017. Date of first exam was October 13, 2017. As you can see, she had tremendous trauma, causing complete avulsion of some of her teeth in addition to partial avulsion to the others. Specifically speaking, she had trauma to her upper anterior sextant in addition to her lip and associated TMJ. Patient Mary, upper left photo, which includes upper torso of the red shirt on first day of treatment, December 2nd, 2017. Teeth in the maxillary anterior sextant have been traumatized, displaced, and fractured with evidence of loss of gingival architecture. Further, the alveolar ridge in the upper sextant is fractured. And the best way to distinguish between dental fracture and alveolar fracture is that when you are testing for mobility, you can actually see the alveolar crest moving through the gingival tissue. You can see the whole sextant moving as compared to only one tooth. And that's the key differential diagnosis of a dental fracture versus in conjunction to alveolar bone fracture. So enclosed again, this report is in a SOAP narrative format. So you have subjective conditions, which includes the patient's complaints, the patient's history, the subjective matters that are related to this condition. Then the report will discuss objective findings, which includes radiographic assessments, clinical assessments, objective issues such as electric pulp testers, radiographic findings, and so forth. Then you have an assessment, which includes the treatment plan and prognosis, which includes a final assessment of what patient will require and what type of temporary or permanent injuries that the patient would suffer as a consequence of this trauma. We also put the attorney on notice with the following statement. Please take a moment with your client to review the enclosed medical report and advise us in the event of any possible inadvertent errors with respect to history, dates of treatment, associate procedures within the next 10 days of your receipt. So this way, when the case settles, they will not be able to come back and say, oh, this is wrong or your price is too high, which is a standard thing that attorneys do with doctors. You have to stand strong, but yet at the same time, if you want to be successful, you have to be able to work with them so they will refer you future cases. So by definition, if the attorney at the time of settlement asks you to reduce by one cent, then by law they have to tell you what was the total settlement amount. And they have to give you a distribution of the uh, settlement for all the doctors, including the attorney's fees themselves. So you need to make sure you have a lien sign, attorney signs it, patient signs it, and then it's up to your practice. If you're too stubborn and too fixed on your price, and you're not gonna get any more referrals. Those attorneys spend minimum $50,000, $60,000 a month getting these clients. So you have to, that's your way of feeding into their marketing campaign. And you can be part of the team although you have to maintain your ethics and substantiate any and all findings that you have and you have to work as a team because sadly being at UCLA for example for 25 years 
recently. In fact, this case, an attorney on the opposing side, also from UCLA, from the oral surgery department. And at the end, you'll see all the aggressive treatments that we had to do to try to save the patient's mouth. The attorney literally says one crown was broken, so the fee for that crown and some other things is $3,000, where our fee comes out to a lot more than that, about $35,000, $40,000 of treatment. So you'll get some disgusting, disturbing responses by other doctors who are literally uh, relying on the insurance company to pay for their mortgage payments. And they'll say anything, they'll do anything. A classic example in the law books is that a uh, patient loses an eye as a result of a drill going into the eyeball. And, and the disgusting attorney on the opposing side uh, said that the patient is blind because of stigmatism, not related to the drill going into his or her eye. So you have to be prepared for this field, you have to be prepared for this industry, and if you take it and understand it, and uh, the, the more you get your research or scientific documentations to support your report, and then your depositions, this is a whole new industry for you guys. I've been in it for 25 years, and you guys can run with it. And your expert witness fees, mine started at 250 in the beginning, and now it's around 1500 an hour. So it can be lucrative, but you have to be able to work it and, and work with the attorneys and understand and rationalize everything that you're saying, document everything, and uh, you can have a successful practice added to your additional other aspects of your practice. Training and facial examination of this patient. Hello. Okay, let's put it on pause. Patient was referred for temporal mandibular joint pain, mouth injuries, and fractured teeth. This is a table which demonstrates the complaints, objective findings, radiographic findings, assessment, treatments required, and limitations. Attorneys look at the limitations, such as permanent injuries, partially permanent injuries, to negotiate the punitive damages in the case. Chief complaints of this patient was jaw pain, difficulty chewing, jaw clicking, jaw locking, headaches, ear pain, dental fractures, and his teeth hurts, her teeth hurts, and difficulty eating since the accident. History of the accident. Patient Mary is 20 year old, normally developed female, who was seen in my office on October 13, 2017 resulting to an automobile injury sustained in a personal injury accident, September 8, 2017. You can see there's a photo of the accident. Patient states that she was the driver of a car with no passengers aboard. When another car to the right went through a stop sign, cut her off, striking the front of her car, striking the rear end side of the opposite vehicle. They should state that upon impact, she was sitting very close to the steering wheel and due to the severity of the impact, her face struck against the steering wheel, causing her to break her fall, her front teeth and cause lacerations to her mouth. The driver called an ambulance. Within a few minutes, the ambulance came and took patient to the emergency room. Due to the severity of her dental injuries, ER referred patient same day for dental consult, who advised patient that she would require upper front teeth to be extracted. They actually want to extract her upper front teeth, five upper front teeth. 
and gave patient bill in excess of $30,000, the patient was unable to get the work done. So here's an example where you can have several different doctors having different treatment plans. They actually want to extract her upper five anterior teeth. This is a 20-year-old girl. Radiographic results were remarkable for root, requiring root canals to 7, 8, 9, tooth number 5 through 12 are remarkable for periodical lucency, thickening of the PDL consistent with traumatic displacement. All five teeth, 5 through 12, 5, 6, so abdominal fractures, displaced roots, and crown fractures. The TMJ tomograms demonstrated right TMJ displacement of the disc associated with a light right-sided retruded condyle consistent with trauma from direct impact. The Panorex demonstrates multiple dental fractures to tooth numbers 5 through 12 associated with traumatic partial avulsion displacement. The pain to patient's jaw is severe and associated with joint locking to the right side. Her jaw pain associated with headaches and aggravated by forceful chewing. She is resistant to yawning or any masticatory movements, which require extensive opening of her mouth since the above trauma. She states that her reference complaints began since the accident. This is important. It's important to assess what the patient says and also prior dental records because that's the first thing the opposing side is going to be looking at. They're going to be saying whatever patient suffered is as a result of prior to this accident. They're going to try to bring in congenital conditions, genetic conditions, and environmental factors such as parafunctional and so forth related to her present condition. Anything but the accident itself. That's what the opposing attorneys will try to do to diminish the damages to this accident. Medical history is unremarkable. There didn't seem to be any systemic conditions such as cardiovascular, respiratory deficiencies, systemic disorders, and the like. For example, if the patient had arthritic changes, and if there's arthritic changes in the TMJ, then they would try to show that the TMJ is as a result of a pre-existing condition. The dental history, the patient states that she has had root canals and other treatments in the past. However, none of her present complaints were present prior to the aforementioned accident. September 8, 2017. Social history, patient denies any parafunctional habits such as grinding, boxing activities prior to her accident. Examination. A complete and detailed cranial mask masticatory neurological examination was performed. General physical examination for the 21 year old female patient and moderate distress. The gait of cervical and cranial maxillary movements were guarded. The gross motor movements of the right TMJ was guarded. She was alert and oriented to per person, place, and time. Ears, eyes, nose, and throat are clear, no discharge. Skin is remarkable for aggressive bruising, just right of the mental synthesis overlying her teeth and alveolus. Fracture displacement. The respiratory rate, blood pressure, and pulse were within normal limits. Facial symmetry. The patient was asymmetrical when viewed head on during dental intercourse patient. This is critical as it demonstrates that the mandible is not sitting evenly, the head of the condyle on the right and left side within the mandibular faucet. There was a fluctual swelling overlying the right TMJ that could be contributing to the asymmetrical symmetry. 
inspection of her head and neck revealed no scars with areas of ichnos to the right chin region. There was tenderness, tenderness and pain and palpation to the right TMJ throughout the mandible localized to the anterior sextal. Muscles of mastication, stomach phytomastoid, and upper trapezius. Neurological function. Motor function of the cranial facial and anatomical structures was bilaterally intact. Normal muscle tone and extremities. Size of muscle wasting to the right side of the mental synthesis with loss of sensation to that region. Sensory examination to empiric light, touch, temperature, and vibration from a deficit to the traumatized region. Jaw mobility. Pain free internal size of mouth opening was 35 millimeters. Average for a woman is 55 to 60 millimeters. With pain in her right TMJ and maximum opening. On 40 millimeters. The passive range of opening is associated with the soft endpoint. This verifies that there was no fractures. In addition, there was a right sided maxillary deviation upon mouth opening. There was also pain in the right TMJ upon clenching. The patient was unable to go into maximum intercuspation. This accurate overjet motor bite was unable to be conducted. The range of motion, protrusion, right and left movements were all limited. Cranial axillary palpation, right TMJ, there was acute tenderness overlying the TMJ, with swelling overlying the right TMJ. Left TMJ demonstrated minimal signs and symptoms. This is a graph demonstrating the right headaches. This is one of her complaints as compared to the left side of her head. These are all using visual analog scale, VAS, and the patient puts a line between 0 and 10, and that's a subjective finding given by the patient. So normally we would do that for all the patient's complaints. That's a good way to document the patient's progress. You do that testing each time patient comes or once a month and he assess the improvements. Interoral, there was soft tissue, there was loss of periodontal architecture, tooth numbers 5 through 12, hard tissue, alveolar fracture, rest of tooth numbers 5 through 12, dental trauma to tooth numbers 5 through 12, which have been partially evolved as a result of the impact. This is a range of masticatory mo movements and it demonstrates the percent of movement to full range of movement in all one, two, three, four, five different ranges of movement. Right and left lateral movements, protrusive, retrusive, and inter and size of mouth of Radiographic recommendations and findings. Dents of multiple dental fractures, TMJ radiographic compression is remarkable for eccentrically located right condyle. The right condyle was retreated within the maxillary fossil. This is a um, tomogram of the patient, and you will compare the right side versus the left side. These are some teeth, some endo. You can see that uh, they pass the apex on one of the on the lateral incisor. The other teeth have uh, periodontal period lucency. Preliminary diagnosis: of multiple fractures, alveolus fracture, right TMJ instability. Overall finding consistent with traumatic jaw. Obvious, the patient would undergo conservative TMJ modalities, which include vapor coolant, trigger point injections, where you're inserting carbocane into the TMJ, surgical tractions of traumatized teeth, osteo surgery, upper and lower partials, 
be followed by Kramovich. Patient came in for follow-up and examinations and treatments. The initial treatment was interdental fixation, where we placed composite between at the intermediate proximal of 5 to 12 to minimize the forces to those teeth. This is a schematic representation of the nutritional and sensory and motor supply, or no more nutritional and sensory supply to the upper anterior teeth. And it shows that once the teeth is partially displaced, then that could sever the nutritional supply to the teeth. And as a result, teeth can become necrotic, requiring an allowed treatment and more extractions. These are all schematic representations of the TMJ. How the disc is in between the head of the condyle and the mandibular fossa. And if the disc is popped out of position, normally it just gets popped forward and the head of the condyle is and falls backwards. So it's called a retruded condyle. Here's another example. Where on the right side you see the head of the condyle being forced back as the disc is forced forward. This is a nice paragraph that discusses how the TMJ is similar to the other 200 or so joints in the body, and the critical difference is that it's smaller, it's biconcave, and more vulnerable to uh, traumatic injuries several millimeters from the brain. I put this paragraph in because often opposing doctors and attorneys, they try to diminish the TMJ as some sort of a hocus pocus condition. And you need to bring it back to the jury that it's a joint, it's an actual joint, and the only joint that comes out of hinge on the normal use. So I bring a skull there and I discuss the cases and show the movement to the jury so they can actually see it's a function mechanism. The dental injuries are aggressive and uh, we try to save as many of the teeth as possible. So we perform the osseous surgery to the upper anterior sextants to enhance the alveolus in that region. Top uh, are the pictures of the treatments, and on the bottom is pretty much the final result. It took us about four or five months to get this completed, and we ended up only having to pull one tooth rather than all five teeth that the previous doctors wanted to pull. Impression based on history, clinical exam, and radiographs. The excess force from patient's impact resulted in anterior disc displacement of the right condyle, causing the head of the condyle to displace posteriorly. This is referred as a retruded condyle, radiographically evident. The resulting effect is clicking, snapping, and popping of the TMJ. So this is this this right here. We need to have a full discussion about it during the depositions, during the trial, so the jury gets a full vision of what is actually going on, and they get a feel of the pain and suffering that the patient underwent. That's pretty much it. That's the whole report. I want to thank you so much for uh, listening to this mini seminar about case study of personal injury for mayor. Thank you, and have a great day.